Hello everybody, it's Diane Mattis in her studio and with us is the third lesson about jelly printing and it's focused at masks and stencils. And masks, you know, you think of wearing a mask, but masks also can hide part of us, right? So a mask hides us and that's what it's going to do in the print we make. And a stencil sort of goes around us, right? It's going to show, show the negative space and the mask will cover up whatever it is that we're hiding. Okay, so those are the two ideas I want you to get. We're going to use, um, here's an example of a fish I made using a mask. And here is a sort of tiger or puppy or something with a stencil. So we're going to try different things. And we're going to start out with a pre-cut. I mean, it's not pre-cut. It's just a picture of a fish that I, I uh, grabbed and I printed it on simple paper. So we're going to use that to get started with. And then we can cut our own shape fish because once you cut one, you can cut your own by uh, folding and cutting it symmetrically. So you could do a fish that you find or any shape that you find or something that you make up yourself. All right, so let's get over to the, uh, we're going to go over to the, okay, over that way to the uh, printing area. It's fun to play with this. All right, let's see. Whoop. All right. Here we are. We're just going to use the materials we're going to use. Here's my, you know, I always write notes because as simple as this is, it's super complicated in my little brain. So I wrote my notes in here, and this is my sketchbook, and here's my trial. And um, so I'm going to look at my notes, and I'm also going to use a nice piece of, you know, for rolling out. I'm going to use that again. I already started one there with rolling out like we did in the first two sessions. I'm also going to use a comb. And you'll see why I'm not going to comb my hair because I hardly ever do that. But I'm also going to use a piece of cardboard that I found. In you know, basically, I take an old box and I pull it off and I have a pattern. So I'm going to use these two objects for creating a texture on my print. So I'm going to use my brayer again, the jelly plate, two colors that are contrasting. So I'm going to use sort of a shiny gold and a dark blue. Those are you know, we can use any paints you want to, but I'm going to use those today to make my print. And as I said, I'm going to start out by making my mask and my stencil. And I'm going to do it all in one shot. I'm going to cut this out, and I'm going to cut it out really pretty carefully. This time, you know, sometimes I cut loosely, but today I'm going to cut very carefully. But... And if I want to change it a little bit, I can change it. I don't have to follow the line. If I want to make my fi fish longer, I could do that. I could make it maybe with a pointy nose. I could add another fin if I wanted to, All right? So again, this is just a guideline. But I am going to try, unlike my usual, unlike usually when I say cut it out in pieces, I'm going to try to do it all in one one cut, which is is for an advanced cutter, right? Advanced scissor works. Now, if I wanted to make this pointier, I could do that. Maybe I want to make it a little pointy on this side. So, okay. So, there's my, uh, this is going to become a mask because when you flip it over and you get rid of all, you know, you hide all the design work that is in the fish, you just see the shape. And shapes are fantastic. Shapes, even though it just has a shape of a fish, we can usually recognize it, right? This is pretty recognizable as a beautiful fish. And that's what I'm going to use today. Uh, this would be a mask. This would be a stencil. So let's see if we can use one and then the other. Okay, so I'm going to roll up. First, I'm going to create um, a beautiful golden... It is gold. I hope it shows up on this. It looked kind of just sort of off, off yellow, but it does have a lot of golden specks in it, which makes it glisten. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to off roll as we've been doing. 
get some beautiful gold over there. And I'm going to use, let's see, where is my, I guess I could use the, um, this cardboard first. No, actually I'm not. I'm going to use the, this wonderful comb and I'm going to comb right through it. And I'm going to wiggle it around because I like it. And maybe I could try a little something else there. Whatever it is, just a little bit of texture. And leave it like that. I'm going to print on just a regular piece of paper right now, or just a regular white piece. I'm going to line it up as such. I'm going to press it. Now, I've found, again, it's winter time, so it's really dry in my house. So if I wait too long, it will not print. It will dry up, and I'll have, I'll get a non-print. I'll press it onto that paint, and it won't really give me much. But if I do it quickly, I should get a print, and it is very shiny. It, it's sort of like so glistening. And I, you can see where I wiped away the paint with my comb. So that's cool. So that's just my background color at this point. Now I'm going to use my contrasting dark blue. There's still a little gold on here. I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, and I'm going to give myself some paint on there. And I'm going to roll up. Go different directions. Try not to ooze it off the edge. It's really a ballet of keeping enough on the plate, but not having it go overboard, right? And then what do I do with this? I off roll it onto my book, right? Off roll it, creating some color in my book. And I was going to try, let's see, I was going to Let's see. Use, ah, here it is, the fish that I cut out. I'm going to go ahead and just lay that on down there. doesn't matter if it's right side up or upside down. It doesn't matter at all. And I'm going to do a few little presses with my cardboard. And you can see it gets paint on there. It lifts off a little bit. But I'm not going to overdo it, right? I don't want to overdo it. And now I'm going to go back to my first. It's already dry, which is fantastic. And I'm going to lay it right down. And what do you think is going to happen where I put that fish? That's the logic question right now. So I'm going to lay this down. I'm going to try to line it up as best I can. Press it down. I'm just using inexpensive um, copy paper today all right, for this one. And I think I'll use a color piece, another piece for the next one. All right. And let's see what we get. Ah, so you can see my stencil, I mean my, uh, my mask covered over and created, this is really stuck on here. I hope we don't have problems in classroom with it getting too stuck on there. But it's, it, it, I can save this and actually glue it into my book. I could use this as an element for another piece, right? It has some nice texture on it. But my print has the two colors, and you have the golden, and even some of the gold is coming through where I picked up with the cardboard. You can see that on there as a texture, and you can see the texture of the white and the gold where I did the fish. So that's pretty simple. I'm going to let that dry. It actually already is dry. It's unbelievable. This is a little messy. I think I'm going to try to pick up that whatever else is on there, just to get it off with my sketchbook. Let's see if we can pull up a little bit of it. Yeah, it is pretty. I might, I might maybe clean it off for this lesson. Sometimes I use that, but for this lesson, I'm going to clean it off in between because I'm imagining another student will come up and use this next because we're going to be using Air, um, print making centers in the classroom this time. Instead of every, everyone having their own, we're going to do centers. Now I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to start out with my gold again. I'm going to layer it on, bray it on, and if I want to do the same thing again, actually I could do Off rolling, 
quickly off rolling, not wasting my time. I think I'm going to try to do the pattern with this one this time. Just a little bit. I can always off go set. Let's see. And I'm going to take the stencil for this one. But first, I'm just going to print this out and I'm going to use some color paper. I'm going to print the gold onto this insanely fluorescent yellowy greeny paper. I, I always find fluorescent yellow has a lot of green in it. So you might be not be able to see it in this video, but it is kind of a splash of coolness to this yellow, which is crazy. Let's see what happens when we mix together. So there's still, there's a little blue underneath there still and a lot of gold on there. So when we look at that, it gives a really interesting texture. Now what we're going to do is the contrasting color. Today it's blue. Maybe tomorrow it would be dark red. And I'm just kind of, I don't even have to go to the edge with this one, depending on how big my mask is. Okay, I'm going to off roll. And I'm going to use my, you don't have to do this uh, work with the, with the um, textures, but I just think it's nice. And I'm going to put my fish, I can put it wherever I want this stencil. I'm going to do it down here. And you can see I'm leaving that, that to come, I'm leaving that top part on there. So it will make a different sort of well, I'll show you what it makes. Let's do it. Sometimes the best thing to do is do it. And then you'll learn what's going to happen next. And then you'll re hopefully remember that. And I'm really going to press into where that stencil was because I want to capture, pick up all the paint that was peeking through, right? With a stencil, you're showing the negative. And let's see what we got. All right, really interesting. And I love the fact that we have the yellow, the gold, and the blue together. And that sort of looks like the edge of the water, like the, the horizon line. So I really love that. I'm gonna put that into play. So I got two prints, one using the stencil, and I, eek, I actually managed to pull this off. Hopefully ours won't tear, uh, but let's see if this tears, this one. Oh, tricky, tricky getting this off. I have to be gentle. I could have printed that fish onto heavier paper. That was the other thing I could have done. And you know what? I think next time I will just cut my own fish without using a print off. So let me give you an example of that. I'm going to take, if I wanted to create my own fish that I make up, I'm going to make it long. I'm going to fold my paper. I'm going to use that as my line of symmetry. And I'm going to start. I'm going to make a sharky, maybe a more sharky fish. Now this kind of work might be hard for you. So you might practice this by folding a paper and coming up with something of your own. But as you see, it's pretty good. I mean, I can always go in and, and add something. I could change this top, you know, use the symmetry the way you want it to be used. You don't have to keep it symmetrical. So if I want to make a mouth, I could do that. If I want to fold it again and make it a little pointier there, I could. If I wanted to add, maybe just on one side, a different shape than the other shape. Ooh. Getting a lot of little pieces everywhere. Okay, so there's my shape. I could do an eye. Let's see if I could do an eye. Sometimes, in order to get the eye out, I could use a hole puncher. But another way to do it is to figure out where you want the eye and just... Fold it a little bit, cut it out, and you'll get an eye in there. It 
It's really a surprise sometimes. All right, I'm going to try this again. I'm going to switch it around. I'm going to do the blue first. I hope this works. I, you know, sometimes the boldness of the color overcomes the other colors. So we'll see how this goes. Nothing like trying and experimenting. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing I did the first time. I'm not going to take too much off, though. All right. And I'm just going to do it one. I'm not going to do the other color. I'm actually going to print on a color piece of paper. How about that? Because I think this will be gorgeous the way it is. Uh-huh. Let's see. I'm just going to try this onto yellow paper. So let's think about it. I could also maybe make the waterline on there, right? More pronounced. Let's see what happens. Until you try it, you might not know what's going to happen. Pressing, pressing, pressing. Massaging, 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 peeking, 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 and pulling. Pulling a print. There we go. And we have this beautiful negative space that's popped up. We have my little paper cut out. And if I'm careful with it, maybe I can save it. If I'm not, I'm just going to pull it up in pieces, but I would like to save it, preserve it, and actually use it in my book somewhere because it has wonderful texture on the back, right? So this is live and learn. I think next time I'll work with a thicker paper for that, but I love it. I love the two, and maybe I could even, let's see. Decide now where this should go. Another thing I can do is later on, I could add a lot of different beautiful things to this. I could draw in here and do a lot of work in there. So you can see all these prints, each one came out a little different depending on what, what we did. And then we also have remnants of the work, right, that are, are there. So starting from this, getting to this, it's all going to be good, and we want to glue it somewhere in our book. So whether it's just a straight-on glue-in like that one, or maybe or maybe you want to trim it and um, make it pop. Maybe you want to put it into an area that already has something in it. Let me just show you what that would look like. I'm going to just make more waves up here. I'm so interested in the water, you know? And then I'm going to fold this back and fold this back so it sort of hides that. But I'm going to glue it like that. All right. I'm going to also fold this back. All right. So... Watch carefully. I'm going to do a quickie glue job that makes it pop out a little bit. Because I had mentioned that to some of you in the class that I have made pop-ups with our books. And the, clue, the, the trick to this is gluing it in but not flat down. Actually just gluing on those edges. Glue one edge to one side and I get it straight on there. And then I open the page, or start to close the page, I mean, and I glue it like such, right? So it kind of is holding the paper open, pressing, gluing. So you can see when I want to close it, it's got to fold. So there's my pop-up, little pop-up guy just pops up if I keep it glued in there it'll pop up so I mean it might need to redo some of that gluing but that's the idea I do have another one that came out pretty nicely in here there he is this one is with that light work 
and he definitely is popping up. And you can see I added some bubbles. I started to add words. So all these pieces can become what they're meant to be by you thinking, adding, changing, having fun with color. All right. So masks, stencils, all for fun. I hope you enjoyed that. And um, we'll try it. All right. Enjoy jelly printing today. Bye-bye.